The healthcare industry is closely following the development of new payment arrangements for doctors, hospitals, insurers, and other stakeholders that reward high quality, high value patient centered care. These unique groups, called Accountable Care Organizations or ACOs, have left many eager to know what is the recipe for success? Will ACOs actually improve care and reduce cost? To answer these questions, Researchers at the University of California, Berkeley, and the Dartmouth Institute for Health Policy and Clinical Practice are fielding a survey of ACOs. In 2013, the Kaiser Permanente Institute for Health Policy and the Commonwealth Fund brought together the researchers and a diverse group of stakeholders to vet early findings and find out what people most want to know about ACOs. Afterwards, they sat down with Elliot Fisher of the Dartmouth Institute to get his take on the discussion. My name is Elliot Fisher. I'm the director of the Dartmouth Institute for Health Policy and Clinical Practice. Steve Shortell and I had helped contribute to the development of the accountable care organization model. And so we both thought about five years ago that it might be important to try to understand how this model is emerging in the United States. It, it seemed at that time to be a, an idea that was germinating. Um, there were a few organizations that had said they were stepping up to become accountable care organizations, to become ACOs, and we at that point decided to say, let's get going and try to track the emergence of this model. Um, as it turns out, there have been so many more ACOs launched over the last few years than we anticipated that it's very timely and important research to understand what makes these things work, uh, what makes them fail, so that we can make the mid-course corrections that'll make it possible to bend the cost curve, make healthcare affordable for our kids. You know, one of the biggest surprises we had in this early work um, has been the diversity of the kinds of organizations and entities that are getting into this field. Um, there are, not surprisingly, some that are hospital-based. There are a lot that are physician-led, a surprising number. Um, there are many that are jointly led by physicians and hospitals, but, but even more important is there are some very unusual organizations that are coming into the, to become ACOs, networks of community health centers. Uh, Walgreens has launched uh, several ACOs in partnership with primary care practices in communities. So the diversity um, of ACO models that is emerging is really interesting, offers some great opportunities for us to learn whether the places that are most likely to succeed are those that are large integrated delivery systems where they've got it all together or historically have, or whether it's some of the newer, more disruptive uh, models of care that may be able to replace a lot of what we're seeing in our current delivery system with much better, more nimble, higher quality, lower cost care. Well, the, the next step is obviously to link the information we have on organizational attributes of ACOs with data on performance. Dartmouth is lucky to have access to the Medicare claims data for our research. We've been funded by the NIH for 10 years to do that kind of research and the Dartmouth Atlas Project. So we will be able to link information about organizational attributes with measures of performance um, based on the claims data. So we'll know a lot about what their costs were, but there are also a lot of quality measures that you can ascertain, you can determine from the claims data. How good is the diabetes care? You know, what's happening to emergency room visits? What's happening to readmissions? What's happening to overall hospitalization rates? So we anticipate within the next year or so to be able to start to link the data that we've already collected to measures that will allow us to understand the performance of these systems and determine, well, which attributes really do predict better performance on quality, which attributes do really predict um, better performance on cost, so that we can provide guidance to those who are out there struggling, saying, hey, what works, what doesn't? You know, how are we going to get better? Well, there are a few surprises that come out of this meeting of, of a great group of people who are policymakers at CMS and, L and researchers. And, you know, in that, I think the most important one is, boy, do we need to know what's working and what's not working as soon as possible. You know, there's a real sense of urgency um, to learn how are these organizations doing. This particular research that we're reporting on, Dartmouth and, Brook Dartmouth and my colleagues at Berkeley are reporting on today, is mostly about what do these organizations look like. We still don't know how are they doing. You know, are they reducing costs? Are they improving quality? Which aspects of ACOs leads to higher performance? That's, what pe that's the knowledge that people are desperate for. There's some good reasons that they're desperate for it, right? 
Uh, we know that the movement is early in its infancy, but there are probably over 400 already. Uh, we know that Medicare is facing substantial challenges in its budgets. Uh, we know that there are reforms of the physician payment system being contemplated. Um, so there are lots of reasons for us to want to have information about what works and doesn't under these new, you know, accountable care models. And so there's, I, I think the biggest surprise to me is the sense of urgency um, that everyone is coming to this conversation with.